Hey, it's the Fonz. Like the new do, we're filming from beautiful Baja Tustin in California. So today, we're going to talk about monopolistic competition. You know what that is? That's, that's the best competition. And what I say is, it's idealistic that we have competition in... Where's the tele... The teleprompter! Where's the teleprompter? You guys moved the teleprompter! Okay, I guess... Let's get someone who can actually explain this. Um, how about Professor Mark McNeil from IVC? Well, I guess we're gonna have some fawns, huh? Hey! Monopolistic competition. Uh, market types, pure competition, pure monopoly, monopolistic competition, oligopoly. This is monopolistic competition. The three characteristics, number and size of firms, conditions of entry and exit, and whether the product is differentiated or homogeneous. In the case of monopolistic competition, number and size, many, small, just like pure competition. Conditions of entry and exit are free. There. So these first two are exactly like pure competition. Where monopolistic competition differs from pure competition is it produces a different differentiated product. And what that means is that it attempts to take a, a, a market segment or a, a product and then differentiate it in some way so that it gets it so that so that the demand for their product is very slightly uh, less elastic. It's not perfectly elastic anymore. They're really creating, satisfying product niches. So, the, the product differentiation could be based on characteristics, quality, conditions of sale, location, or perceived differentiation, uh, differences. So, here's price and uh, quantity determination for monopolistic competition. They face a demand curve that is quite elastic, and since they're going to sell at one price uh, to every customer, then their marginal revenue curve has twice the slope of the demand curve. So there's their marginal revenue curve. We'll give them their cost curves. There's average cost and there is marginal cost. So what quantity would they produce at? Where? Produce the quantity where? Marginal uh, competition! Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. Where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, that's the quantity. And then they go up to the demand curve to find out what is the price. That's right. You got it. Good job, Fonz. Hey. And now, in this example, do you see that this point, when they produce this quantity, that point tells you the average cost of producing this many units. So this difference right there is the profit per unit. So this firm is making a profit. But... In the long run, will this profit continue to exist? No! That's right. Good job, Fonz. Hey. So, in the long run, we have average cost. I just gave you these little ghosts of the previous stuff. But what happens is that when there is profit, when there is profit, profit attracts entry of new firms. So other firms bring their resources and change and start selling in this, in, in this industry to try and take advantage of the profitable opportunities that exist. But when that happens, then this firm has to share its market with additional firms. And so that reduces this firm's section of the market. And so their demand curves float inward like that. And as more and more firms enter, it just keeps floating left and left. And with it, the marginal revenue curve floats to the left. I assume their costs don't change, so that's the average cost. And what ends up happening is that, this is marginal cost, yeah. So where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, that's average cost, then that's the quantity they'll produce. But look, all of a sudden, that's the price. But it's also the same as average cost. Do you see that that point is both on the demand curve and it's the average cost? So when price equals average cost, profit per unit equals zero and total profit equals zero. So other firms enter, this firm's demand curve shifts left until the long, in the long run, price equals average cost and profit per unit is equal to zero. 
Uh, good example, uh, yogurt stores. I think it was, uh, I forget which was the first of the yogurt stores. Yogurt Land. Yogurt Land. I believe it, I read an article about this guy who had a house in Malibu overlooking the ocean, and he had started Yogurt Land. Now, when he started Yogurt Land, did his uh, Yogurt Land stores produce a lot of profit? They did, enough to buy a house in, in Malibu. But then, did a yogurt store open up on every second street corner around Southern California? And all of a sudden, could the Yogurt Land guy sell as many cups of yogurt at the same price as before? Or did that guy's demand curve start shifting inward? And it did. And all of a sudden, that profit disappeared. So if you start a yogurt store now, it's not likely you're going to make any real money. So, there's this other thing. In the long run, see in the long run, this demand curve is just going to be tangent to the average cost curve and there's going to be no profit. But in terms of efficiency, is this efficient? Well, there is something called the wastes of monopolistic competition because as long as that demand curve is downward sloping and it's tangent to the uh, average cost curve, it turns out that's not the lowest point of the average cost curve. The lowest point of the average cost curve is right there. So what that means is that there are some resources that are being wasted. That is, if production were organized differently, then um, uh, it, it would use fewer resources to produce this. So it is not um, productively efficient. There's some inefficiency here. And not only that, the quantity produced is lower than it would be under the most efficient conditions. A good example of this is Rite Aid. Last time I went into Rite Aid, there were like one, two, three, four checkout counters, and then over here is the ice cream counter. I was right there. And somebody was helping me, and two people started backing up there, and this person here said, I'll be with you in just a moment. Well, you have this big giant store with four checkout counters in it, and how many of these are operating at any given time and how many people are wandering around in this big store with lots and lots of dollars worth of inventory in it and the answer is a few if you go to Costco do you see this or do you see uh, a facility that's being used at some very efficient level so there are these uh, examples of the wastes of monopolistic competition gas stations it's got eight pumps and two are being used at any given time um, lots of small many sellers so monopolistic competition is very close to pure competition it's got this little drop of monopoly in it and that's in the form of product differentiation so did we have any fawns here hey <laughs> i think i'm done bye